Thank you very much. Um, I want to talk about topics related to artificial intelligence, to education, to digital skills, and so on, from the perspective of four different roles as an educator, as a, an AI expert with experience in the field since 87, so a lot of years uh, working in AI, um, educator also more or less the same time. Um, I want to talk to you also from the perspective of someone doing research in the area of education, but also from the perspective of a mother of teenagers that use digital skills. Um, when you see the picture here, uh, we think immediately, well, these robots, they are intelligent, and the perspective of the users of such tools is the fourth perspective. What we see in the Hollywood films is more or less what a lot of people think the future will be. We have also such pictures that give an idea of AI, of the development of the technology that we still don't have. And such news are hype around a technology that is advancing very, very uh, rapidly in the last years, but also since 1956. So we think, and some people think, we already have such terminators that will read also our minds and so on, but that's still not the case in almost, well, more than 60 years of um, the field of artificial intelligence. This could be the future, maybe, maybe in 100 years, but maybe it is not the future we would like to have. Um, it is what um, Collins call artificial intelligence, coming from fiction, from Hollywood films, from the news, that give you an idea of what artificial intelligence is, that it is not reality. Um, still, we have a momentum now in artificial intelligence. It is not the first time. These are called the artificial intelligence springs. They are periods in the history of artificial intelligence since 1956, uh, um, where you have a lot of investments, a lot of, um, yes, momentum, but also a lot of applications, a lot of money also um, put in, in, into research institutions at the universities, for example, and a boom of applications in all areas. We have this AI spring now again, and it is um, related or it is uh, depending on how much data we have. For example, since 2003, when LinkedIn was um, funded or uh, created, uh, Yes, what's the war? Well, yes. And, and Facebook one year uh, later, and then uh, Twitter two years later in 2006, that are since then, together with all uh, other social networks, accumulating an amount of data that sometimes we don't know how to do with that. Also the big tech um, companies. A lot of data about what we share, in likes, uh, what we share, photos or comments or um, retweets from what other people say, what we put there of our information, of our um, um, data, sometimes private data from family and so on. And it is an amazing amount of data, also in videos, photos and so on, that we cannot keep the trace uh, about. And uh, this data is essential for the well-functioning of a lot of different AI algorithms. Without them, these algorithms cannot work properly. And now that we have such data, these algorithms, and also, which is also on the slide, the computing power, machines, new machines, new technologies in the hardware uh, side that can deal also very, very fast with answers for these algorithms, it is good because they can improve and then you can develop new algorithms and models. Not only that, 
20 years ago, ago, I had to wait for a conference, after the conference, to have the proceedings in my hands, to read the papers. Now that's not the case. They are uploaded to the internet, and you can take a look at a lot of different proceedings in pre-proceedings, prepare reviews, and you can have access not only to the proceedings, but you can also have access to the code, which you can download, and you can implement your algorithms yourself. Of course, if you more or less know how to do that, that's uh, without question. But you can, and we have all around the world a lot of different um, small, medium, big uh, companies dealing with social algorithms, dealing with data, and so on. These infrastructures also push the momentum, and is this what we have now? The question is, well, do we want for all the problems we have a technical solution? Do we need, for all the problems we have, a technical solution? This is what is called AI, or technical solutionism. So the, the popular idea that once we have a problem, then we need a technical solution for that. And there are a lot of different um, scenarios, a lot of different problems that don't need a technical solution. It is also very, very difficult to um, develop a solution to, the pro to a problem, develop an algorithm. It is not that we have thousands and we take one. So social algorithms, depending on the data available, depending on the kind of algorithms and so on, they will work, yeah, as you expect or not. The question then in the, in the, in the perspective of um, educational institutions, and, and as an educator, I tell, uh, I'll tell you that, sometimes I don't need a technical solution to know how my students are uh, learning. Um, how they learn, how they interact, what they need. There is a lot that, well, it is not necessary. I don't need a tool for doing that. I only need contact. I only need caring. I only need to interact with my students and not a technical solution. However, what we have from sometimes from the big tech companies is you need this solution, and this is that, so with a lot of lobby, and then at the end, schools, institutions end up buying solutions they actually don't need, and then after they implement these solutions, they put it on, on, on their, in their infrastructures, it is actually a problem to get out of those solutions that don't give you uh, the, the real um, yeah, state of the students, uh, educators, uh, uh, etc., learning, and, and so on. Uh, what you have is actually solutions that, well, they function very well and they work very well in very, very um, specific domains. And this is what is called weak AI. Weak because it's very narrow. It maybe can solve a problem and you can interact with Pepper, and it depends only on the uh, language on the problems, on the text, on the data, Pepper had. But then you can, or you maybe want to talk with Pepper about this amazing um, uh, location here, about the Abiba uh, Stadium, and then maybe Pepper cannot talk with you. Um, what we have is a lot of data, and this is then the question, is this, um, yes, cloud computing, it is not in the cloud, this is actually data centers, it is intelligent, what do we know about the data? How do we deal with the data uh, responsibly? And this will be a topic later, uh, that we can trust such tools when they give the answers to the problems we have for the problems where these tools are, impl are implemented. Actually, this is the big dream of AI. Since 1956, the first time the AI, uh, or artificial intelligence as a concept, uh, was coined. And it is actually having machines, having machines that do the same as you and I do, interact with others, are conscious, are autonomous, and so on. Well, this is still not the case of AI at the moment. Maybe 20 years, 50, 100, we don't know. You have people that tell you in five years, and they are telling in five years since <laughs> 30 years. So it is very difficult to implement such autonomous machines, conscious, and so on. And this grand dream of AI have been the, the 
the star of all researchers in the area, and this is why I also teach AI. I did my PhD in AI. I have students that do uh, AI and so on. So I am uh, actually uh, one uh, person that likes uh, what uh, I do. Uh, but we need to take care about some things that are happening in this field. Because the grand dream of AI, it is actually one thing as a dream and another thing in reality. And I am taking only here the case of education. There are a lot of all different fields that have similar problems. For example, when you, this is only one application, proctoring, yeah? Um, maybe all of you know about proctoring, online proctoring. And this is one study of the all AI uh, organization. They took a lot of different proctoring tools and they evaluated them according to certain criteria, which are a lot of criteria that also are related to the guidelines for truthworthy AI from the European Union. For example, security, responsibility, robustness, and so on. So you have, you see this in, the, in this um, area. And, you, and they had four different um, yeah, paramet or parameters, but some different, four different criteria, criteria. There is nothing about that in the tool or where you can have an idea how this is dealt in the tool or it is not compliant, or um, it is, there is partial compliance, or there is full compliance. And if you see what they found out, so almost all, the, so the majority if no compliance. For example, no explainability when something happens. No possibility when students are, uh, the, the only chance they have, or the only uh, option they have is this proctoring tool, and if they don't want, there is nothing else they can do. No, um, for example, sharing data without the consent of the students or without the consent of the parents, and a lot of other different things. And when you see that, then you have to be a little bit skeptical. It is not putting something between technology and us, it is evaluating critically which is the technology we need to apply, we want to apply, and why. Um, because there is a lot of different things that are happening, and now with my, uh, well, I, I cannot read anymore, I am not so young anymore, but I will try to mention some of them. So sometimes what happens is that it is a tool for surveillance for keeping data, for, for well, for, for uh, tracking all what students are doing, and we don't know what happens with the data later. We also have the problem of, well, lack of AI li literacy. So a lot of different institutions, yeah, they get those tools, are the best things you can have, and so on, a lot of lobby, they buy that, but they don't know actually how, how these tools work. What are they doing with the data? They don't know about what is done behind from the side of AI. Also, because, uh, well, educators, psychologists, and so on are not involved in the development of such tools. And this is actually a very important thing when we will then apply these to tools later in our institutions. Um, also, well, there is no opt-out uh, mechanism if the student don't want, for some reason, there is no possibility, a different possibility. This will need to organize then our, our survey. This that they accurately identify suspicious behavior and so on, well, they are no studies. They are no studies that compare um, detecting fraud or something in real life, so human-based, and computer-based, there is no study that says computer-based is better. This is missing, so maybe there is research that we need to do. But there is also a lot of uh, different tools where, for example, there is um, discrimination. Students with special conditions, autist uh, students, or with dyslexia, etc. they behave differently. They maybe need to look to a different uh, place and not all the time uh, to the exams they have. Maybe they have different behaviors and the data we have is the majority not from this kind uh, of students or people in general. So the algorithms are very, very good. 
depending on the majority of data they have, but not the particular data that maybe is the one we need uh, most care and, 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 and yeah, um, deal uh, with that now with social students and so on. So there are a lot of different problems these tools have, and this is only one example. Um, this is only one, also one example of one paper among many that are dealing critically with this situation, with these tools. So it is actually some big brother we have in our, stool, in, uh, in our schools. Do we want that? Also, um, well, I, I would say, no, I don't want that for my students. I don't want that for me. I don't want that for my children, for example. At the end, there are a lot of different tools that have to do with surveillance, with control, with power. Who will have this data later, doing what, for what, and so on. And actually tracking what we do, as if students were in a prison all the time. Um, yeah, uh, I don't like that. These are things, uh, I, I, not that I like to talk about that, but we need to critically um, yeah, assess what is also behind the great tools we are having now for these digital skills and tomorrow, which will be digital. We need that, but we need also to ask, to question what is what we are using and if we need that. It follows a couple of examples you maybe already have seen in the news. This one was a couple of years ago. Uh, well, having tools that automatically uh, generate um, marks or grades for the students because of COVID, it was not possible uh, to having the exams uh, in, in, in presence. So uh, it was assessed according to what the students did and more or less about data, uh, compared to data from the past and they gave a grade to the students. When I read that, I thought, what? So I am telling some students you have an A or you have a B or a C without giving her or him the opportunity to, 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 to do the test. This is crazy. And some of them, so they were, they, there was a lot of push up um, and uh, against those tools, against the ministers. At the end, they had to cancel all that. So it was in the UK with also, well, you see, uh, they are one example, uh, students and also parents, students that lost if that were considered, lost the entrance to the university. No? Um, also that, so programs, and this is very, very interesting how anthropomorphism is, uh, is part of the email. So an email accused a student, and it was not an email, it was the administration accusing the student of suspicious behavior to, during an exam. And well, if you have such tools, you need also to know how these tools work because it can happen that it was not true. She was not the only student accusing of that. There were also other students. There were, there were a lot of um, uh, different um, yeah, critics and, 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 and it, it was not only in the news, but it, were, it was also all uh, student boards and so on criticizing what there was, there was no suspicious behavior. What is the what it, the tool is doing and accusing students of that, losing trust in in the, in the institution and so on. We don't need that. A couple of months later, they of course decontinuated the, the tool. Didn't use it anymore. But you have also I, I found us in, in Ireland, so also in a newspaper. Um, parents a little bit skeptical about, well, do we need cameras in all our uh, schools, like frequently in, in prisons, uh, overseeing and seeing and tracking everything what our students do, also in the bathroom. This is a very, well, we need to talk about that. And also this is one concrete example in the US where students and teachers have to uh, enter into an app to give the time they want to go to the bathroom 
And I, when I read that when students want to go to the bathroom, they ask to go to the bathroom and they can go. Or they, we need to organize something else at our school so that, for example, students don't, don't, uh, don't be too uh, much time um, uh, out. So we need to deal a different way with going to the bathroom without uh, actually needing an app where all the data is entered, where teachers and students have to then define to go to the bathroom. Um, I think there is something that is not working well there. Um, in a sense, if we have all the amazing tools we have and we still need more, we still need to critically ask how such tools are used, are implemented, what is behind, for doing what concretely, and by whom, and actually for whom. Because the data, for example, in the intro introduction a couple of minutes ago, how do uh, administrators and schools will use that data that is collected? Well, I will tell you, it won't be the administrators and it won't be the teachers, it will be big tech companies working with that data unless you have artificial intelligence specialists in your institutions, which is not the case. So evidently, this use of the data won't be you. It will be someone else. It will be a different uh, corporator, a corporation doing something that maybe later is private uh, uh, yeah, um, domain you cannot look inside what, is, uh, what it is doing. And if you have a program that classifies the wrong way a tomato, well, that's no problem. But if you have a program that classifies the wrong way, whether a student should go to the university or not, this is a different thing. So we need to question such tools. Because sometimes what it is done with the data inside is actually uh, not what we would like. The best position is to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that is tracked, uh, people who is, uh, whose uh, data is collected and so on. I can put myself there. I have two teenagers. I can see what is collected about them, what they are doing at home, what they are not doing that they should be doing because they have a lot of different um, digital tools they don't need for learning maybe learning for a topic with other um, classmates, with a teacher and so on is the best thing and not with an app after the app, after they close the app, you ask and only a couple of things remain. So we need to reactivate the old, uh, some of them are very, very good ways of interacting, caring and so on with students. In the background, we need those digital skills. All those tools function very well because there is a lot of different people in the background, also underpaid, putting uh, information or annotating information, pictures and so on, so that the algorithms work well. Without that, the algorithms cannot work. And all this labor, very, very, um, bad uh, paid from third world countries, uh, more, most of them, etc. These are tasks that cannot be done by machines. We think that machines are so intelligent, can a lot, they cannot work properly without that behind. So we need also to train our students, the future people that will develop such tools um, properly. And also because maybe they are the ones that will be annotating those tools. So we need also to, to take into account that what is behind, it is not all the good news that you can expect. There is also a lot of that happening uh, behind, which is also not well paid. My um, opinion is that the more our students depend on technology for doing all the things they need, the less they will be prepared to solve the problems of the future and to use such technologies. It is simple, you don't have to go to school. The more you depend on that, the more you give your agency, the more you give your decision making to machines. And you will not be prepared to make decisions when machines 
cannot cope with the problems we have. And reality is very complex. We have a lot of different problems machines can still not solve. This is also what you have. A lot of people that are well prepared, okay, mass layoff in the last weeks, for example, on Twitter, Facebook, and so on. It was not a, so you, you can be a software engineering, AI specialist, and so on, and you can be also put out laid off. So we need to train our students so that if they choose, for example, to learn to study AI, that they can also solve all the kinds of problems. These digital skills, ethical skills, um, dealing with technology, this is our present, this will be our future, but how? If we only look at the narrow, very, very weak development or use of tools, and it means only using those tools and not learning what is happening behind, we will be very, very bad prepared for the future and our students too. So a couple of suggestions, digital literacy, especially artificial intelligence literacy. You don't need to be a specialist in AI. This will take some years maybe. This is maybe not what you like, but understanding how these algorithms work, this is very important. Um, and start early. We don't need to teach a five years schooler what artificial intelligence is, but maybe dealing with such tools, maybe there are a lot of different courses also for schoolers to, to give them an entrance into technology in, a, in, in general. So we need that too, yeah? Um, there are a lot of different tools. We need to learn how to deal with the tools, but also we need to ask what is behind those tools. And we need this proficiency. These digital skills means also proficiency using those tools, but also questioning what or whether we need to use those tools in our classrooms. Maybe there is something that we prefer that is better in some context that don't necessarily, doesn't necessarily need to involve technology for that. We also have to question and we also have to prioritize human values, human rights, and ethical aspects. This will be a topic uh, in the conference. There, there is a lot of work um, uh, revolving around that how to trust technology, um, questions about um, yeah, privacy, security, and so on. Doing ethical decisions is not a, thing, a simple thing. There are a lot of different ethical schools, so if you, yeah, you cannot implement that in a machine. Consequentialism, hedonism, positivism, I don't know. Which one? So there are a lot of different alternatives depending on so, uh, also on the perspective you have for solving a problem. Maybe for the company, the goals are different, and they are surely different than the goals of the institution. And they are very different, maybe, uh, compared to the goals of the students. And maybe they are very different compared to the goals of the society, of the parents, of all the different stakeholders involved. So you have to also analyze and also be uh, aware of the different ethical um, yeah, theories, positions, and try to understand and then taking the best one in one situation. But there is not only one solution. Also teaching, building early. So this is one uh, photo um, from one of the workshops we have in a girls' day where we invite students to come to the university. You don't need a, well, you have computers there, but we have also with um, yeah, cartoons and, and so on. So trying to, to build something with their hands, to think about the principles, about the processes, and you don't need um, yeah, uh, um, all the time a technology behind, but the, the, the solutions and, and problem solving skills and so on, these are also very important and you don't need a technical or something in, 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 uh, in your hands. Um, in a sense, and this is the message I, I, I w want to, yeah, to repeat from the concept of AI, AI solutionism, they are problems for uh, which we don't need 
a technical solution. They are a lot of different problems. We still don't have solutions for that. For that. And the best thing is that we try this, all these digital skills and, and learning about the technologies that will, will and are are determining, making decisions about our present, about our future, that we also teach our students how to deal with that, but also that they know what is behind. This will be the best thing. And as educators or as decision makers in organizations that have to do with education, always questioning for whom, for what, doing what with the data, collecting which data, maybe there is no need to collect all the data, only minimum data, anonymized and, and so on. Because that will actually uh, transform our present, but also the future, which not all the times will bring us happy news, as the, in ex in the examples we had, which were leaked to the media. Otherwise, you wouldn't know what is happening uh, behind. Thank you very much. That was all from my side. Thank you. So, thank you very much for that very thought-provoking presentation. Um, we will have time for maybe one or two questions. Uh, if anybody in the audience would like to ask a question uh, of our speaker, but please wait till you get the microphone. Uh, there's one over here. Uh, because we're recording the session and the the question won't be recorded if you don't have the microphone. So the question is coming, the microphone is coming. Hello, many thanks. Um, I used to work as a history teacher and yesterday I did a little bit, a uh, little experiment uh, where I put some um, of the type of questions I asked my students, essay type questions I asked my students um, to a, a new AI tool called ChatGPT. And um, I asked it to provide me an essay-based answer. And the answers provided by the AI were extremely good. So my question is, um, what does it mean, quite practically speaking, for the teachers if students right now can already use AI tools um, that are impossible for teachers to detect, for example, through plagiarism, plagiarism detection mechanisms, because these answers are completely original, um, developed by these AI tools? Yes, so these tools, so not more than six days old, with more than one million <laughs> uh, uh, access uh, by now, everybody in Twitter at least, where I am, uh, I am also, are given examples and all is commenting what these tools uh, do. Well, we will need to change how we, uh, our assessments uh, and how we um, want to test whether students know how to write, for example, such. Um, um, yeah, papers and, 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 and works. Because it is now very easy to enter the information into a tool and then to have something that it is very, very, very uh, difficult to detect what is wrong. But I can tell you that it is not 100% um, uh, true. So for people that know about the topic, it will be easy to detect, oh, well, this is not true, this is not true, this is not true. But it will be increasingly more and more difficult to detect what is not uh, true, and for students, um, anyways. So we need then to change that. Maybe we can use the tool and then let students generate such tests, and then the evaluation is, where is something that it is not true, that may be, so that they need to research a little bit more and then contrast and then detect what is what these tools are not doing or are not uh, uh, giving uh, uh, the right way. And maybe, well, uh, assessments that uh, are based on, on these reports and, 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 and uh, written by the students where will be increasingly more difficult to, to assess whether it is a plagiarism and so on, then we need to change. Because this will be happening like the calculators. For example, my children have problems uh, doing the calculations by hand. No, I, a calculator, a calculator, no. So try step by step, but then at the end, do we need doing the calculations by hand 
what is there, what we need, the process of analyzing critically, solution problem, and so on. This we can do independently whether we have the calculator or not. I saw, maybe very, very short, I saw also one tweet that was in this um, spirit. I will give my students the tool and I will be happy if they come with improved uh, uh, reports because these tools have also a lot of different yeah, uh, good things. Uh, but then we will discuss which are the limitations and this will be then the discussion we, we have around in, in, the, in the group. So we need to maybe change how we assess, what we assess and wha what we then uh, permit, for example, in an exam. If they don't have this tool in the exam and they have one hour to write some text, they will have problems if, if they didn't um, uh, practice doing that uh, alone. Simulation, yeah. And they also have to know when the answer is wrong because that often <laughs> happens with calculators. We have a gentleman over here who wants to ask a question. Uh, thank you very much. Conor Galvin, University College Dublin. That was a superb presentation. It's, it's given us a lot to, to think about for the rest of the day. Um, can I ask, is there any particular aspect of the, uh, the AI or the data analytic agenda that you're particularly positive about? I mean, is there anything that you see that, can, that we can actually really use as educators? Um, you know, there's a lot of flags there. But what strikes you personally as the, yeah, maybe this is something that's really worth pursuing? Um, I got a similar question at, uh, at a conference, and it was also, well, tell us something positive about that. Um, and I had to think about that, because um, I am more um, impressed by how easy it is to trust blindly such tools without critically thinking what is behind. This is what makes me think, uh, uh, well, we, we, we need a stop. We are depending too much. There is also another book, very, very uh, uh, good, which says uh, we are surrendering instruction by instruction, app by app, to computers that make decisions for us, and we are adapting to them so that they work, uh, work well. However, they still have a lot uh, uh, to do until uh, we have such machines we can interact with and, and so on. In the same way, we both interact. So I had to think about that. There are a lot of different things, for example, dealing with a, a huge amount of data. Let's uh, say, for example, I don't know, evaluations and, and in how fast uh, students answer to, to a problem, uh, et cetera, that we can use in order to personalize exercises and so on. It would be great if for students that have more trouble doing something that if the tools can automatically personalize and give, for example, all the kinds of suggestions, um, of explanation, what is happening and so on, in a way that, for example, for all the students can be done easily, time we don't have, for example, in the classroom to address each of the students we have. So such things I can think of, and there are solutions for that, more or less. I, I, I think this is great, because they don't need all the time someone uh, helping them. They can have some help um, from the machines in the same so. They are also students with special conditions, that, and there are also some research um, where, for example, they are more um, yeah, openly, they communicate more with robots or, or with the computers, and they have uh, instead some problems communicating with other uh, classmates. So maybe that's the way of um, relaxing, of uh, interacting, of trying something in a scenario with a robot or, or, or a computer where they can maybe try things. They actually don't, don't, don't trust themselves to try with other people. For example, in such scenarios, great if we can have tools that help these students with special conditions to, 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 to integrate, uh, to be integrated in, in the society and so on. And there are also a lot of different um, um, yeah, uh, tools that online digital skills and so on, where a lot of different people can have access from their homes, from schools and so on, that otherwise they 
couldn't have access before. A lot of different courses, trainings, and so on. So we have to skill our our uh, our students, also our workforce, and not their skill. We their skill when we trust computers that they do everything for us. We don't learn anything new, and then when we have a problem, we don't know what to do, how to solve that problem. So I see a lot of potential. There is a lot of potential and also based on AI uh, because there are certain algorithms that can deal with the data and give you answers fast enough in order to adapt also. But there is also a lot to critically question because not all the time is in, 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 yeah, in favor of uh, learners, in favor of um, parents, in favor of us. Of course, I will have a tool that uh, automatically um, grade all the exams. But sometimes mm -hmm. I need to take a look and then I need to compare and these tools are still not so good for doing that alone without my supervision. It will be perfect, the combination. They assist me, they, uh, I can use them in order to do my work better. Students can use that in order to learn better, but not the other way around. So yeah. making decisions, telling us what to do, and then in a real situation what, where we have to, to do something else, we don't know, that is not the best option. So thank you very much.